All right, so uh, hi everybody. This is April seventh. Um, so we are uh, we're going over pre-calculus. We're in the middle uh, of a transition between exponential functions and logarithms. And I'm going to talk through a quick example here where we're looking at our uh, our student loan balance. This is the example that we ended with uh, on uh, last Thursday. Um, and so well, the question that we have is something like this. So if I have my my function that models my balance after t years, we could ask a question um, that something like this, right? So when does uh, my balance reach $60,000, right? And so we could also similarly ask the question, hey, when does my balance reach $80,000 or really any amount of money that you want to be thinking about? So one of the ways that we could do this is we could use Desmos, and we are interested in the answer to the question, hey, when is this over here, when is our output or our loan balance equal to 60,000? Okay, so when I look at my, my X and Y axes, this is gonna be time down across the bottom, right? So this would be five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years. And then um, the loan balance is gonna be over here on the Y axis. So this is 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, 80,000. So according to our example, it started, right? So at time zero, after no time has passed, our balance was 30,000. And then we can see that it grows from there. So we're particularly interested in saying, hey, when does my loan, when does my balance reach 60,000? And so, you know, we could do an estimate where we could sort of click on a point over here and we see that, hey, you know, our loan balance is gonna be 60,000, you know, right around 13.7 years, okay? So this is one way to do it. We could sort of look at the graph. Um, a nice thing about Desmos is we could uh, plot a line, y equals 60,000. And if we look over here, it'll actually highlight this point. So we can be a little bit more accurate this way, where we can say, hey, if I click on this point right here, um, this data point tells me, hey, after 13.673 years, um, our balance would reach 60,000, right? So that would, be, that would be a very precise answer. Um, and so similarly, we could do the same thing for 80,000. If I just change this to 80,000, we could see we'll reach 80,000 after about 19.348 years. Um, so sometimes what we wanna do is we wanna be a little bit more precise than this, right? So depending on what our units are, we might need more precision. Um, and so uh, this 80,000, right? So um, let me click on this point again. This 348, maybe we wanna be more accurate. So um, as mathematicians, we look at this and we ask ourselves, how can I get the most precise answer, right? So what would I do or how could I um, figure out what the exact answer to this question is um, to be as precise as possible? So let's jump back over to our whiteboard and, um, oops, I'm gonna jump over back to my iPad here. So we're gonna go ahead and, and check this out. Um, all right, so this is our warm up. We wanna know, hey, when does this reach 60,000? And so the problem becomes, um, hey, I wanna know, when does this, when does 30,000 times 1.052 to the T equal 60,000, right? So we, may, we might have something that looks like this, 30,000 times 1.052 is equal to 60,000. And uh, um, if I try to solve this, I wanna, what I wanna do is I wanna, some, at some point in time, I would like this T to be by itself, right? I'm gonna try and solve this thing for T. Um, and so just sort of going through the, the process here, I would maybe divide both sides of this by 30,000, right? So I'm gonna divide both sides by 30,000. These cancel and what I'm left with is 1.052 raised to the T is equal to two. Okay, so the problem is now 
based on uh, everything that we have so far, all of the tools at our disposal, um, we don't really have a good way to get t out of the exponent. Okay, so when I look at this, I can't, you know, just adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing is not going to do it for me. Um, so I need something else. I need another tool in my tool belt, and um, the tool that we're going to use is called a, a logarithm. Okay. And so this whole chapter six, the whole thing that we're going to go through today and this week, probably next week, um, is this idea of how do I how do I get this t? What is the tool that I'm going to use um, to solve equations that look like this in particular? Okay, so 1.052 to the t is equal to two. You know, I'm not really sure. We could guess and check. We could try something like that, but we want something that's precise. So. Um, the answer to this question is um, we're going to use a logarithm and we were going to say t is equal to log base 1.052 of 2. Okay, so, so we're going to see notation that looks like this. This is not going to make um, a whole ton of sense to us right now, but looking at this right here, this is the answer to the question. Okay. So when we see this, what we're going to think about through today and through um, a lot of this is whenever you see this log, right? So this right here, log, it's the answer to a question. What exponent do I have to put on this equation? Okay, so what is the, what is the exponent t right, that I have to put in here? to get a result of two. And the answer to that question is this, log base 1.052 of two. Okay, so we're gonna have this new function, um, it's called the logarithm, right? So, and it has this notation. Okay, so generally, you're gonna see things that look like this, log base b of some input, right? So this is gonna be the general form that we're, that we're looking at. Okay, so, so let's take this back over to Desmos and see if we can match these things up and make some sense out of, hey, what these answers are telling us. Okay, so, so over here, we, we answered this question, right? We said, hey, 13.673, um, that is the, that's what I'm gonna have to plug in here for T to get the 60,000. Um, and so what we said, based on our, our board work, was that if I looked at this number, log base 1.052 of two, I should get the same result. Okay, so I should get the same answer. Um, and so in some sense I do, if I just look at the graph, it gives me this 13.673. So it gives me out to three decimal places. Um, now if I look at the logarithm, right, if I look at this answer, it gives me 13.673, but then it also gives me a lot more precision here. So I can get more decimal places, I can be, have a more precise answer by doing um, it out this way in general, okay? And so um, with this example, this is a very practical one where we see the numbers aren't so nice, but what we're gonna do through our exercises is we're gonna go back and we're gonna take a look at um, some nicer numbers um, and see if we can make some sense out of what a logarithm is telling us, right? So this is the exponent that I have to put on 1.052 to get back to an answer of, of two, okay? Um, all right, so if we jump over here, um, so what is this now that we're looking at? So this is our activities. Um, this is our book that we've been working through. So you can see that throughout the semester, we've, we've done this. We just did exponential functions. Um, and this activity that we just looked at, this is what we looked at at the end of class on Thursday, right? So we had a, a $30,000 student loan and it grew at a rate of 5.2%. So we worked through this um, that week. So now we're gonna move on to chapter six and we're gonna start thinking about um, these logarithmic functions and um, what we want to what we want to
to use them for. Okay. Um, so what I just went through, what I was talking about is all of this right here, right? So the function, this log base b of x, it asks us, hey, um, what exponent do I have to put on this base to get back to this number that goes in here? Okay, so if we look at an, an equation of this form, log base two of eight, you're asking yourself a question, okay? What exponent do I have to put on two to get back to eight? Okay, and so if we think about this, two times two times two, that's eight. Um, so we should see that log base two of eight um, is equal to, to three. All right, so, so Jody, Nick, do you have this up? Um, are you able to be able to bring this up at home? Yeah, I think so. Jody, you got it too? Okay, so, so what I wanna do is, um, just so these eight exercises right here, um, the purpose of these are to get us to think about, hey, what is the definition of a logarithm and how can I, um, how can I use uh, that definition to make some sense out of what's going on? So when you look at these, um, these are all gonna be some answer, some number that doesn't have any logs in them. Um, so if we think about this one together, log base two of 16, um, do you have any idea what this should be as a number that doesn't involve logarithms? Four? Yeah, it should be four, right? So when we think about it, if I take two and I raise it to the fourth power, I'm gonna get back to 16, right? So two to the fourth is 16. So this should end up being two. Okay, so, so what we'll do is we'll take a minute and um, try to think through these eight, and then I'll give you some time to think about them. Maybe say, you know, five minutes or something, we'll look at these first four, and then another five minutes, and we'll think about these, these last four, okay? Okay. So while you're both are thinking about it, I'm gonna, I'll set up um, on, the, on the blackboard.
All right, so how do we do? We feel like we got these ones? You think you got them? All right, so what about, what about log base three of 27? What should we get for this one? Three. Yeah, three, right? So this one's gonna be three um, because, right? So when you think about it, you ask yourself, hey, what is the exponent, right? Three, you're gonna say to yourself three to what power is equal to 27? And then the answer, the answer to that question is, is three, right? So this, the answer to that question is three, right? So this three and this three over here go together, right? So three cubed is 27. All right, so these other two are a little bit more challenging. So we're gonna ask ourselves the same question. So what exponent do I have to put on five? So, so Jody, what did you say for this one? What's up, you wanna see here? So what did you say? You still learn with us, Jody? I don't know if you're in the chat. What does that mean two? Yeah. Negative one, yeah, right? Yeah, because five to the negative one is equal to one over five, right? So that goes along with our our exponent rules. Let me see. And then... Uh, Let me see. No, daddy's teaching, okay? No. See? Daddy's teaching, okay? No. Yeah. No. No, I want to do it. I know. Do you want to go get your iPad? Yeah. Go get your iPad and bring it back, okay? Okay. All right, so uh, so we have five to the negative one is one fifth. And then <clears throat> for down here, right, so if I think about one half, we're gonna do the same kind of idea. We're gonna say, hey, one half to what power is gonna be equal to four? Um, and so here we really have to think about our exponent rules again. Um, so if you're just thinking about positive numbers, right, so this one half is gonna keep getting smaller. Um, but if you think about negative numbers, right, so what's going to go in here is negative two, right, so we would take the reciprocal with that negative, and then when we square that, we would end up with four, right, so this is going to end up being negative two. Okay. Um, all right, so did you get a chance to think about the other... The other examples? The... Uh five through eight yeah yeah you got them all so do, do we have any questions about these ones yes the last one uh, so uh, so Nick do you just want to run down your answers to these and then I'll I'll verify sure so for the fifth one uh, I think it's 15 mm -hmm. um the sixth one I think three it's three yeah and then the seventh would be zero that's right yeah so zero so we think back again to our exponent rules right so seven to what power gives you seven to the fifteenth well, that's going to be that's going to be fifteen, and then um, by cubing this, if I cube two and I cube three, I get eight over twenty-seven, and then um, anything any number here to the zero power is going to be is going to be one. All right, so your question is about eight, right? Yeah. What do we how do we deal with that situation? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and this over here. Yeah, a little bit more space to think about this, All right? So what we want to do for eight is we want to think about, hey, what is, right, what is the definition of, of, a, of a logarithm? Okay, so when I think about this number, I'm going to 
ask myself this question. What is log base four of 17? All right, so we want to think about it, it conceptually and say, hey, what is log base four of 17? Um, well, the answer to that as we've been going along is it's the exponent you put on four to get 17. All right, so, so if I take four and I raise it to some power, I'm gonna get back 17, um, right? So it would be four to, to some number up here equals 17. So, so what's the answer to this question? What would I have to put in that box to answer this question? A decimal of some kind. You could, right? It could be a decimal, but, um, but here we have this right here, right? So this number, log base four of 17, this is a number, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this thing here is a number. Um, and it's the number that if I put it as an exponent on four, what I'm gonna end up with is 17. So, so what do I put in, what do I put in this box? Y. So you could, right? So you could put Y. So you could say, hey, four to the Y is equal to 17. And the question is, yeah, what is Y? What would Y be? Uh, log four of 17. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, so so let's go ahead and, and swap that out here, All right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in here, we're gonna put in this spot, log base four of 17. Okay, so what we see is, hey, four raised to the log base four of 17 is gonna be equal to 17. Um, so what's the answer to our original question? Hmm. log base four of 17. So, so question eight was this one up here. It said, what is this number? What is four to the log base four of 17? And think about what we just did down here. Um, right, we have four to the log base four of 17 is just, is just 17. Okay, so, so we have two sort of examples here that are, are things that we want to, that we want to highlight, okay? Um, so the ones that we want to highlight are, are these two. Okay. And so what we notice here is, um, if I, if I highlight uh, some things here, right? So this 15 and this 15 are the, are the same. So, mm -hmm. and then if I come over here, this 17 and this 17 are the, are the same. Okay, so what we're seeing here in these two examples is um, it looks to me like this log, when I have this log base seven, and another seven right here that these end up sort of canceling each other out and I just get this number. And then when I look at something like this, if, if I have a four and then as the exponent I have a log base four, it seems like these two cancel each other out and I'm just left with that number which is 17. Okay, so, so what we call this, this relationship here when two functions undo each other, you remember what that is called? Inverses. Yeah, right. So these are these are inverse functions, right? So they the opposite or the inverse of the exponential function is the logarithm. So when we look at this, we see that hey, these two cancel out, we get 15. These two cancel out, we get 17. Right. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to make this a, a little bit more precise. Okay, so going back again to our, to our notes, right? So when we come down here to the bottom, right? What does it mean for functions to be inverses? And we want to know this property. Okay, so if we have, if we have log base b of b to the x, what is the answer to that question? X. Mm -hmm. And what's the net? What's the answer to the next question? Also X. Yeah, they're both X, right? So if I compose them, right? So we're doing function composition on two things. We're looking at the exponential function B to the X, and we're looking at the logarithmic function log base B. It turns out that if I compose them together, uh, what we end up with is just x okay and so back to our our blackboard here we see that we get these right we get these pieces of information and um we want to think about this right so these are inverse functions right so in particular the functions that we're considering our log base b of x and b to the x are inverses. So anytime that you want to undo an exponential, right? So what we were talking about before, how do I solve that equation? Like 2 to the t is, is some number. Um, if we want to undo that exponential, the tool that we have at our disposal is this thing that's called a, a logarithm. Right, so anytime you want to undo that exponentiation, um, the logarithm is there for your for your use. That's the tool that that we are going to use. Okay. Um, so I want to pause here just for one or two minutes. Let this cook a little bit and, and see if you have any any questions so far. So Jody, how does, how does this feel for you? Things are good so far or got some questions? Pretty good. And Nick, how about you? Uh, I think it makes sense. Okay. So what are you, seems like you're a little hesitant. What, uh, what are you not so sure about? I'm not sure, it's just a little confusing the the whole process yeah so so let's try let's try uh another example here so <clears throat> suppose that we are we are um taking say powers of of 10 right so so i have a 10 that's the same as 10 to the one and then I could do, say, 10 squared, that's um, 100. And then I could do 10 cubed, and that's 1,000, okay? And then we could do, say, 10 to the fourth, and that is 10,000. All right, so I think generally um, us as humans, when we think about this, if this number here, if the exponent is an integer, or if it's just one of these whole numbers, we can make pretty good sense out of it, right? So it's multiplying that number by itself once or twice or three times or four times. Um, but somewhere along the way, you know, we don't have this discrete process. We don't necessarily just have integers that could go here. Um, there's other numbers that are going to pop up as well. Um, so, you know, at some point in here, we're going to have a number um, where, you know, 10 raised to some number is equal to something between 10 and 100. Let's call it, I don't know, um, 50. So 
presumably this number is going to be somewhere between one and two. But what is it exactly? Like, how would I figure out um, what this number is? And so um, we would ask ourselves, hey, 10 to some number, we'll call it t, is equal to 50. All right, so again, what we could do is we could graph it, we could sort of guess and check, but what we want is we want a tool that says, hey, what can I do to get t by itself? Um, and so based on what we learned, what is the, what is the number that we'd have to put in there? Uh, we use a logarithm. Uh -huh. And what would it be? So it'd be log base 10 of 50 equals t. Log base 10 of 50 is equal to t. That's exactly right. So, so this is the exact answer, OK? So a lot of the time, when we're thinking about this, we want um, a decimal approximation that might you know, make a little bit more sense. Um, so again, this is precision. So this is the most precise answer. And if we want to back this off, let's go over to, to Desmos and, and we'll check this out. Okay, so um, we have log base 10 of 50. Okay, so it turns out that this number right here, 1.6987000 is, should be 50, right? So if I do this 10 raised to the 1.6987000, Six nine eight nine eight nine seven. Okay, so if I raise ten to the one point six nine eight nine seven, right? So that's this here. I get pretty close to fifty, right? Forty nine point mm -hmm. nine 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 nine. That's pretty close. Um, it's not exact, right? So we didn't hit exactly 50, um, but pretty good decimal approximation, right? So we're, we're pretty good here. So even if we went out to five decimal places, if we wanted to do the exact answer, right? So I could do, I could put a log base 10 of 50 in here. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna tell me that it's exactly 50, right? So this is the exact answer that will give me 50. Um, and then otherwise we could have a decimal approximation that gets us pretty, pretty close. Okay, so if we jump back over to, um, to our Blackboard. Okay, what we see is, you know, um, log base 10 of 50 is approximately 1.69897. And so we should see that the answer to our question here is that, um, you know, approximately 10 to the 1.69897 is just about 50. Okay. And so the squiggly lines come in because these aren't exact answers, right? So if we want the exact answer, we'd have to use that logarithm, right? We'd have to use the logarithm notation. And um, so if we use this decimal approximation, we'll only be close to 50. Now for the web work, is it going to want us to give exact answers or uh, approximations? Um, so a lot of the time it will take an approximation. So if you're close enough, um, if you are going to put in approximations, my recommendation is put in as many decimal places as you can. Um, uh, but for, so if I'm going to answer them, it's going to be, I'm just going to do the, uh, the exact answers. So how do you input that into a keyboard? How do you put log base 10? So, so yeah. let's see if we can, let's see if we can bring up a, a web work question here.
So uh, what we're going to see is in um, in web work, we are um, we're going to have some some troubles with this. So sorry, I'm trying to think about two things at once here. Um, all right, so can we see this this web work? Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, so what I mean by exact answers. So when I look at when I look at these, um, so sometimes if you were to if you were to plug these into into Desmos, you would find that they give you some sort of decimal approximation. Um, but based on this right here, we should be able to um, get the exact answer for these for these problems. So. Um, these ones right here, these are very similar to what we just sort of went through with those eight exercises. Um, so what would this, like for this log base three of 81, the question would be three to what power gives you one over 81? And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess and check on this one, right? I would try to think about a what, what power of three is going to give me one over 81. I would try to find that exact number. And do you know what it is? Uh, negative four. Yeah, right. So if we put if we put negative four in here, um, and when we submit, right, so it'll tell me that that is correct, right? So that would be that would be an exact answer, right? So um, we'll see what we'll introduce this new notation here here in a moment. Okay. So so again. We would have this stuff like this, right? So log base ten of of x is equal to three, um, right? So you know, um, if I take ten and I raise it to the third power, what am I going to get? Right. So this would be thinking about it in a in a backwards way. Okay. Okay. So so when you look at these, we're going to work through some examples where we are going to now start to think about, hey, how do I combine logarithms, right? What does it mean if I add them or, or I subtract them? How could I use, how could I use that information? Okay, so, um, so back to our notes here, um, as we, as we saw, right, so we're gonna, we're gonna start to build up a rule where we can think about um, the logarithm of a product. And then that's going to help us also with adding logarithms. How do we how do we put things together? Okay, so um, so I have an exploration here. Um, so this is section six point two point one. So we'll see if we can can make our way through this. And what this will do is it will build up a a um, a rule for us. And so I'm going to work through this one exploration six point two point one. And then we will see a summary of them uh, at the end of this section 6.2, right? So I'll put all the rules together. We won't, we won't derive all of them, but I do want to show you sort of how, um, how at least one of them works. Okay, so if you are, um, if you have this up, um, we're going to walk through these four steps together, right? And so I'll try to make this as interactive as possible um, and see if we can come up with an identity. So what do I do if I have the logarithm of a product? How can I sort of break that up? And what does that mean? Um, what does that mean for us? Okay, so, so either, so if you're on YouTube, right, so you might take a screenshot of this here or, um, or you could bring this up off of our Play-Doh page. So I'm gonna jump back over the Blackboard so I can, so I can write. All right, so our goal for this section is to um, come up with an identity, okay? So the identity we want is, hey, if I have the logarithm of a product, right? So if I have logarithm of u times w, um, what is that equal to? How do, I, how do I use and understand logarithms to, uh, to um, work with this, okay? And so, um, 
what we're going to do is I am going to see if I can somehow come up with a way to break up this product as um, you know, some other operation, whether it be multiplication, division, exponentiation, I'm gonna to try to break up this product and see if I can come up with um, a way to, uh, to, um, to write log base B of U times W as some combination of log base B of U and log base B of W. So um, to help me out, I'm going to introduce some notation Right, so we're gonna have log base B of UW is equal to A. We're gonna say log base B of U is equal to C. And um, log base B of W is equal to D, right? So instead of writing logs, we're gonna do A, B, and C. Okay, so um, Part one in this exploration says rewrite A, C, and D using the rules of logarithms, right? So when I think about A, C, and D, um, I don't, I want to rewrite each of these expressions, right? So I have three expressions right here. I want to rewrite them um, and I don't want logarithms to be in there anymore, okay? Um, so if we think about the definition of the logarithm, this right here, tells me, hey, if I have B and um, I raise it to the power A, I should get back to UW, okay? So the definition of the logarithm says, this is the exponent, right, that you have to put on B to get back to U times W, right? So the exponent that goes on B to get back to UW is A. Now, one sort of cute thing that some of the students I had in the past showed me was um, the way that they thought about it was you started down here and you said that this number B raised to the A power. Okay. If I come back this way, it's equal to UW. Okay. And so when you think about this sort of diagram, so B raised to the A is equal to UW. Um, what they, what one student saw was this was a snail. And so if they drew sort of two little, two little antennas on it, um, they thought that it looked like a snail. Um, so some of the students called this the snail method in the past, which I thought was pretty cute and, uh, and was helpful to remember how these things, uh, go. So when I look at this, um, B to the A should be equal to UW. And similarly, right, if we do, um, we'll do another snail here, right? So it would be B to the C is equal to U, right? So if we snail this, we get B to the C is equal to U, and then also B to the D is equal to W. Okay, so when we talk about the definition of the logarithm, right, what is it, how can we, rewrite these things. Um, we're sort of going back between the exponential notation and then the logarithmic notation. So these are two different ways to think about um, the same thing. Okay, so this is part one of the exploration, rewrite them. Um, and so now I say part two, you have three equations here. Okay, so you have one, two, three, one, two, three equations. I want to combine them into one. Right, so I want to combine all these into one, into one equation. So do you have any ideas on how you, how you might do that? We can uh, substitute B to the C in for, in for U in the first equation and B to the D in for W. That's right, yeah, so you're gonna say this U right here is the same as this U, so you're gonna substitute in B to the C, and this W is the same as this W, so you're gonna swap those in. Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I would do. And so you get, right, so this, was, this was step one. Um, step two, what we get is we get B to the A is equal to B to the C times B to the D. 
And so this is U and then this is W. Okay. So we have one equation, B to the A is equal to B to the C plus C times B to the D. And we're going to use exponent rules to come up with an X to come up with a relationship between A, C, and D. Um, so using exponent rules on this tells me that I could really write this as B to the C plus D. Okay, so we know that if I multiply two things at the same base, I'm going to add the exponents. Um, and so in part three, when I think about this, B to the A is equal to B to the C plus D, then I want to know how, are, how is A related to C and D? And so one of the nice things here is, hey, I have, I have the same base, right? So B, right, I'm raising B to two different exponents and I'm getting the same thing, right? So I have B to the A and I have B to the C plus D. Those are the same. So what this tells me is my exponents really have to be, they really have to be the same. Okay, so, so my exponents here, have to be the same. So A is, has to be equal to C plus D. All right, so through this, through steps two and three, we brought this back to exponent rules. Um, and so at the beginning of today, what we were thinking about is, hey, logarithms are really exponents, right? These are the exponents that, that I have to put on different numbers to get the results that I want. Um, and so it makes sense that exponent rules would apply here. Um, and so what we end up with is A, right? So if we go back to the start, A was this log base B of UW. Okay. Is equal to B, or sorry, is equal to C, which is log base B of U plus log base B of W. Okay. And so what we're doing is this logarithm, it's a tool, right? So it's a tool for us to help solve exponential equations. And what they do is they behave like exponents. Okay. So um, addition right here in the exponents um, corresponds to this multiplication over here, right? So we had this relationship where um, if I were multiplying two things with the same base, I could add the exponents. And so that's the same, it's the same property, except we're thinking about it as logarithms now. So um, this multiplication, which is the same as this multiplication here, becomes addition on the outside. All right, so anytime that you have your, a multiplication inside of a logarithm, you can rewrite it as addition. So um, historically, this was actually really, really useful um, when you wanted to multiply large numbers, right? So you could do logarithms and effectively what it does is it takes multiplication, which is hard or harder than addition, right? So it turns multiplications into additions, which is really nice for us, right? So it's a, it's a, um, of course we have calculators now, but before, before there were calculators, um, this was a really useful tool to help speed up computations um, and turning multiplications instead of multiplying a bunch of things, you could add them. Um, so it was very, very useful. Okay. Um, all right. So, so how might this be used, right? So we saw that in the web work, there were some of those problems that came up where we were adding or subtracting uh, logarithms. And so um, if we have a new page here, right? So, uh, so Jody, Nick, do you have the, are you able to see five, six, seven, eight at the bottom of 6.2.1? Uh, yeah, one sec. Five, yep. Okay, so you have, you have a question that looks like this, right? So log base two of eight thirds plus log base two of six. So this is question five. All right, so if we have something like this, what we can do is, um, there's multiple ways to, uh, to think about this identity that we just developed. Um, one way is to take 
products like this one and turn them into additions, but we can also use additions and then turn them back into to products. Okay, so um, one way to think about this problem is, hey, if I have log base two of eight thirds and I have log base two of six, well, what I could do is I could just plug these into a calculator and figure out what the, you know, what each answer is and then add them together. Okay. So totally reasonable thing to do, but again, what will happen is there's some rounding errors that might pop up. Um, so instead, if we wanted to think about this one, we could instead say to ourselves, hey, what is, um, what is a way to combine these two? And um, the rule that we just developed says, hey, what we can do is we can take log base two of eight thirds and then really multiply it by six. We can put those, the eight thirds and the six together on the inside of the logarithm. Um, and so this ends up being, right, log base two, eight thirds times six. So um, the way that I am thinking about this is the six is really three times two, right? So that's really a six there. So um, these threes are gonna cancel and then eight times two is 16. And now for me, log base two of 16 is something that's a lot simpler to evaluate than um, these other two, right? So taking this one step and just multiplying the inputs gives me that two to some power is gonna give me 16. Um, and so this answer should be four, All right? So if I add these two numbers together, um, what we're gonna get is, is four. Um, and so, of course, what we can do is we can do this multiple times, right? So in question six, we were given this, right? What's log base three of 15 over four plus log base three of two over five plus log base three of 18, right? So if I put all these together, um, and so when you're thinking about this, right, these pluses should end up just multiplying everything together. Right? So what you're left with is log base three of, right, you get 15 over four times two over five times 18. Okay, right? and so um, what I'm doing is I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this and see if I can multiply all these together. Um, and when I do it, um, I just see what kind of factors um, each of these things have. Um, so instead of 15, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this as five times three. Um, instead of four, I'm thinking about this as two times two. Instead of 18, I'm thinking about this as two times nine. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is go through and then just cancel some factors. So a two in the numerator and the two in the denominator go away. Um, two in the numerator, two in the denominator, those go away. Then a five in the denominator cancels with a five in the numerator. And all of this ends up being log base three of, you see, hey, what do we have? What do we have remaining? Um, this three, and this nine, and so this is log base three of 27. And then this is something that we already solved earlier today. We saw that that answer is three. Okay. So it gives us a way to, to bring logarithms together. Okay, so um, I do wanna go through one more. Okay, so this will be a, a way to think about um, you know, solving logarithmic equations. All right, so log base three of x plus log base three of x plus two is equal to one, All right? So how would we, how would we go about solving this equation? Um, all right, so any ideas what, what we could do to start?
we could uh, make it log base 3 of x times x plus 2. Yeah, like this x times x plus 2 equals 1. Right, so we would use our right, use our new rule here. And uh, at this point, what you could do is use the definition of the logarithm, right, or the snail to rewrite this and ask ourselves the question, hey, well, x times x plus 2 should be equal to 3 to the 1. All right, so 3 to the first power should be x times times x plus 2. Okay, so what we've done is we've actually used two of our properties today, right? So if we have if we have some equations that are being modeled with logarithms, um, then we're able to actually get out of this, right? So we can use these, these rules. Right? So we use our addition rule to get our x's together, and then we use a definitional logarithm to rewrite it like this. So we have x times x plus 2 is equal to 3. And what kind of equation is this one? Quadratic. Yeah, this is quadratic, right? So this one right here is quadratic. So what we can do is you get x squared plus 2x is equal to 3, okay? Or similarly, x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, right? So we can solve, we can solve this one. And for me, the, the quickest way to do this would be factoring, right? So I ask myself, hey, um, is, are there two numbers that multiply to be negative three and add to be positive two? Um, so the answer would be, this would be x plus three, x minus one. And so this tells me that x has to be equal to negative three or x has to be equal to one. Okay. All right, so, so we, went all, we went through that. And we didn't have any mistakes in our algebra, but um, this answer isn't quite right. There is a problem. Okay, so um, the problem lies in the way that the original question is posed up here. Okay, so we want to know what values of x can I plug in to this? Okay, what values of x can I plug into this equation and get um, a result of 1? And so this is a place where I think Desmos can help us, right? So we're going to go ahead and, and go to Desmos. We're going to plug in 1 into these and see sort of what happens. All right, so let's bring up, let's bring up Desmos. Right, so here's our notes, bring up Desmos. And what we want to do is we want to ask ourselves, hey, we have log, right? Log base three of one, right? Plus log base three of one plus two is in fact equal to one, right? So x equals one is a solution. But if I do log base three, so let's just go ahead and this way. Let's do log base three of negative three plus one and log base three of negative three plus two. We get this, um, that tells me it's undefined. Okay, so um, problem, right? So when we did our workout, we, we found was there's these sort of false false solutions that come into play, um, this negative three right here doesn't work out for me. It is not, it's not actually an answer. And so if I look at my, if I look at my function log base three of x, um, so let's change our zoom here. What we'll see is it looks something like this. This is a logarithm function and there's nothing over here, 
right? So notice how the green line, it stops at zero and I don't actually get any answers over here. And so I can't actually plug negative three into my logarithm function. There's only, the domain of the function is only positive numbers. Okay, so, so why is that, right? Why could we only have, why would we only have positive numbers for our, um, for the domain of a logarithm? Um, well, one way to think about this is as an inverse function. And so if we look at this function three to the x, the, right, so this scoops up like this, right? So we have this function three to the x. And what we should do in order to get the graph of log base three of x, to get the graph of log base three of x is we are gonna, we are gonna look at this line y equals x, okay? So if we look at this line y equals x, if we reflect it over this line, we would get the purple would become the green, the green would become the purple. Um, and so that would, if we recall, this is what it means to be an inverse function. So with that reflection, the fact that this never goes negative right in this tail means that we can't actually plug in in negative numbers. Um, but we can also think about this in an, in an algebraic way, you know, why, why this wouldn't make sense to be, to give us negative numbers. Um, and so we would think about something like this. Hey, what is log base three of negative three? Right, so if I, if I thought about this as a question, um, what we would want to do is we'd ask ourselves, hey, three to what exponent is going to give me negative three, right? So is there any number that I can, that I can put up here to give me negative three? Um, and so we can, we can try some possibilities, right? So you can, you can play around and test this on your own. Um, like if you had three to the, three to the one, that would be three, okay? Or, or three squared is equal to nine, or three cubed is equal to 27. All right, so these numbers keep getting, keep getting bigger. So I don't think I'm going in the right direction. So we could try smaller numbers, right? So like three to the zero, that's one. Maybe negative numbers, right? So um, three to the negative one, that's one third. Right, and then if I even went further than that, we could say, hey, three to the negative two, that's one ninth. And all my answers here are positive, right? So no matter what I'm doing here, no matter what kind of numbers I put on as exponents, my outputs are never gonna be negative, right? So, so I'm, never, I'm, never gonna have, I'm never gonna have this situation, right? So there's no numbers that I could put in there to get negative three, um, so that's why this is undefined, right? It doesn't make sense that this has, this doesn't have an answer, right? So there's no, there's no number that I could plug uh, in here to give me back negative three, okay? Um, all right. So how does that, how does that feel for the two you, Jody, Nick? Good, good, okay. So um, what we can do, we work through this rule for products, right? So anytime I wanna look at a product here, but um, what we can do is we can actually extend this to lots of different rules. So these all have different, um, these all have different uh, explorations. So there's four different rules, right? So we did rule for products. I'm not gonna go through this. I'm not gonna go through rule for quotients, but um, it's very, very similar. Okay, so two, three, and four are very similar. Um, but 6.2.5, this is a summary sheet of all the information. Um, and so today we talked about sort of the definition of the logarithm. How do we use the inverse property? And then, um, you know, sort of the, the definition of an example. Um, so one thing that we haven't uh, talked about are some conventions. Um, so when we went over to web work, right, so if I jump back over to web work here, um, 
you'll notice that in problem two, you have this notation ln, right? So this is a, a notation. What it means um, is it means log base e. So we have this number e that we've talked about a few times, right? It's about 2.718. Um, and so this, just like pi, it's a number. Um, it's a very special number. We use this uh, natural log a lot. So this, when you type this into to web work, this is an L. So it's L N. Um, students sometimes confuse this with an I. So it's an L. So you would type L N, um, and what it recognizes as log base e. Um, and then if there's no number there, if you just see L O G with no subscript, that would be a log base ten. Um, and so this logarithm over here is dubbed the natural logarithm. So anytime you talk about natural logarithms, um, you're talking about log base e. And then uh, this is often called the common logarithm, log base 10. Um, so it's two that we've seen. And um, all of the different properties for logarithms are, are given here, right? So anytime that you want to combine or, or uh, expand logarithmic expressions. Um, you can use one of these one of these rules. Okay, so um, so what we have down here we have um, we have some uh, a page of examples. So we've got about we've got about two minutes, um, but um, let's see if I can. Uh, I'll walk through sort of um, what we would see here for for number number three, right? So what we're going to do um, is we're going to use these five rules um, to manipulate our logarithmic expressions, and then on Thursday we'll see how this can help us solve uh, logarithmic equations. Okay, so I'll go through this one with our last two minutes here. Um, let me write it down. Um, and, and then we'll call it a day. So natural log of three over e x squared. All right, so what we want to do is we want to we want to think about this. Um, and so if you're following along, what we have um, is the first thing that we can do is we can use our rule for, for powers. Um, and one of the nice things is anytime we have an exponent like this next to a logarithm, we can do is go ahead and bring that down uh, out front, right? So we can move that two down out front like this, right? So this is equal to two times the natural log of three over e times x. Okay. Um, and now when I'm looking at this, um, one of the properties, we didn't walk through it explicitly, but just like we did with multiplication, if we look at division, we can rewrite this as subtraction, right? So I have a division inside of here. Um, and so I'm gonna have two times, Right, a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to rewrite this division as a subtraction. So very, very similar to the multiplication becoming an addition. Um, the fact that we're dividing inside here, um, we have uh, a subtraction, right? So this is going to be a natural log of, of 3 minus natural log of e times x, okay? Um, all right, so if we continue on here, um, if I look inside some more, could I expand any more? And it looks here like I could expand some more, so we could have a natural log of e times times x. Um, and so we're left with two, and then we have um, natural log of three minus, right? So we're gonna subtract the whole thing here. Uh, of natural log of e plus natural log of x. And so um, if we wanted to, to simplify this, um, we could 
expand everything so we'd have two times natural log of three and then the two would distribute to everything so you'd have minus two natural log of e minus two natural log of x okay um and then if we wanted to go yet one step further um this natural log of e right here so this term you would ask yourself e to what power gives you back e um and the answer and the answer to that question is is one right so um so we could replace that natural log of e um with just a one okay so this would be a two times times one there so if we wanted to simplify as much as we could um we could do these kind of of algebraic manipulations so in practice um these kind of examples don't come up a ton, um, but this is an exercise, right? So it's just sort of working through it, getting familiar with the different log properties, how they work, um, understanding them. And so this is kind of like our, our jogging or our lifting weights, if you would, something like that. Um, all right, so any questions about, about what happened here in any of these different steps? So does the, if you go through the activity sheets, it'll talk about all like with the bringing down the exponent and all that stuff. That's right. Yeah. So we, we kind of went fast here, but the, the rule for powers, right? So if you, if you think about that, you can, um, that's exploration three. That's how we did. That's how we did this step. This first bringing down the power thing. That was, that's exploration three. That's one of our, our log properties. Um, so I could do like a double screen share here. Um, so uh, that's this property right here. Anytime you have a logarithm, you can take this exponent here and bring it and bring it down out front as a multiplication. Yeah. And so uh, so think through these. I have. I also have some videos over these on, on, uh, on our uh, video playlist, right? So if you wanna, if you wanna walk through this rule for powers, right? So each one of these has its own video that you can go ahead and, and watch. That's been pre-recorded already, right? So mm -hmm. it might be it might be beneficial to go through and then and watch some of these videos. These videos here, right? So if you click these links in our Plato page, it'll bring up other videos for you. Okay. Yep. Um, all right, so on Thursday, what we'll do, I know we kind of just touched on this at the end here, but we'll revisit this at the beginning of class on Thursday. And then um, we'll do, uh, we'll maybe do some more of these. Um, and then we're gonna move on to solving different logarithmic equations. Right, so, um, Again, we will we will see um, we'll see that uh, that these logarithm equations are very relevant to us, just like the exponential um, equations were before. Right, we saw those exponential models with the current pandemic. As things start to get better, um, what we're going to see is a shift over to a logarithmic model. Right, so the beginning of a pandemic is going to be a exponential model and then as things start to get better um and you know we flatten the curve as you've probably heard a lot we're going to see to start moving into more of a logarithmic model which is which is good All right so on thursday we'll see some of that modeling and, and then how we could solve some of those logarithmic models all right we're five minutes over so i'm going to call it here um but i hope you're all doing well hanging in there um, and then just keep sending questions as they come along Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.